I would like to welcome Mo on the screen. Mo is basically Forbes and Entrepreneur featured serial entrepreneur. He's UK DTC expert, and he's also founder of Be Uniqueness Limited, an award-winning digital marketing agency in the UK. So this is very exciting, and I'm very excited myself. This is going to be one hell of a talk with him. So without any further ado, I want to welcome Mo to the stage. Welcome to the podcast, man. It's so hey, nice to see you finally. Likewise. Yeah. Uh, now that you're here, we, we're just going to start with it. So I want to first talk about, you know, who are you, what you have achieved over the years and what are you doing currently? Awesome. So as you mentioned, my name is Mo. I graduated from pharmacy school, but I didn't like it. So the second I completed my degree, which is something that my parents wanted me to join, which I'm pretty sure you have the same in Pakistan, um, or maybe I like, uh, oh. once was done, with my degree and then, then I joined master degree. I did master degree in business marketing. And then I got scholarship uh, to do marketing at Harvard in the US. And then I got another scholarship to study at UCLA. Uh, frankly speaking, I didn't like any of that. I was just doing that to get a job. And once I got the job, I said, right, I'm not gonna work for anybody. Because after all of that effort I went through, after all of that hassle I went through, um, I managed to help so many companies, okay, including KPMG and many big names and even startups to help them scale the business, start the business. So it was like, kind of like, if I can help them do the business, why can't I help myself? And then I started my marketing agency uh, back in the UK. Um, we were doing all right. First six months, no sales, zero revenue, zero means zero. Uh, I had a kid. At that time, so life was not in my favor, if I would say. Uh, I didn't know how to crack the codes. It was very challenging. And then I had to attend networking events. And that's the thing I always advise to any startup or any, any person watching us right now who wants to become an entrepreneur. You disadvantage one day may become your advantage. So I always thought being me in the UK um, as a Muslim, uh, non-native, attending events at Scotland, because at that time, the events that were available were in Scotland. And Scottish people, they have very hard accent to understand. Mm. So I thought that nobody would ever um, be happy to have any business with me. And then out of the blue, after some time, one of them approached me and said, what do you do? I do such and such. And then, okay, after long talk, he was happy to have a business with me. And then when I asked that person, why did you want to have a business with me? He said, because you were the only person I was able to understand <laughs> that event. <laughs> yeah, I, I love the point that you brought that, you you know, you got into digital marketing and then you helped these companies and then you thought, oh, why can't I grow my own business and start yeah. my own company? So awesome. And yeah, that's that's the point. When you're able to help other businesses do what you want them to do, then you can obviously have your own business. So I want to uh, I want to go a bit deeper into what got you into digital marketing? What was it? What was the turning point that that said, OK, now? Okay, digital marketing is is it, and I'm going to be a marketer now. To be honest with you, I never liked the idea. I, I everything I have been doing was marketing. Okay, so I was I knew anyway I would end up in marketing, but I was between two choices, online or offline. I never liked the idea to have a business based on where I am. I always mm -hmm. wanted to have a business where I can manage completely wherever I am, even if in the bathroom, I can still manage the business. OK, it doesn't mm. matter where I am. So I said, OK, there is nothing, nothing, literally nothing better than having something digital in general that I can mm. rely on and can grow and scale, uh, avoid, you know, uh, fixed costs like office renting, all of that kind of stuff. It will also give you flexibility when it comes to hiring team in the future before COVID, all of that mm. uh, to work wherever you want. And that's how you and I actually got met remotely. Imagine if I wasn't doing anything online, we wouldn't have it, we wouldn't have been, you know, <laughs> together. Yeah, and 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 it's been one incredible relationship Absolutely. over the years. And Absolutely. and I'm also blessed myself, you know, ever since I got into this online world, I've been able to meet people from the other side of the world, some amazing people. And I don't think I would have ever been able to meet them if sure. I wasn't doing what I'm doing as well. So yeah, it's 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 a great opportunity. So now that you have told us that how you got into digital marketing and you obviously started an agency, can you shed a bit of light on what are some of the biggest milestones that you have achieved over the years as a marketer that you're proud of and even as an agency owner? 
uh, first 10 points that we had when we decided to launch the done for you. And I think you were one of us who joined us when we started that at the beginning. So thank you for that. When we started the done for you and we were able to build businesses for people from scratch. Okay. And accordingly, we got noticed and we got caught by Forbes and by entrepreneur.com. And we got featured on Forbes. We got featured on entrepreneur.com. Um, people wanted to have me as a keynote speaker. I have spoken with Gary V. Pretty sure everybody knows him. Uh, Tony Robinson. Um, Click Funnel to CC Awards, Comma Club Awards. Um, so, so many achievements, to be honest with you. Yet nothing competed with having somebody who was just joining business, starting business, want to scale the business. And, you know, we put everything, the heart, the soul, the blood, the effort into it. And they're coming to you as the only hope. And they mm. want to tell you, that you're the only one. I got nothing. I have loans, mortgage, all of that kind of stuff. Please help me. So that is the best, <laughs> right? that's the best achievement, I would say, that I've achieved. Way better than the thing that I mentioned earlier. Yeah, and, and you see more, like, that's what makes you one of the best in the industry because it's the empathy, right? You you have yeah. empathy for your clients. You really want to help people grow. And I think that's one of the key things that actually plays a role in anyone getting successful is that you actually have empathy for other people. You're not just in it for the money. You're actually in it to make a bigger impact, to help people, Absolutely. to help businesses grow. Because when you have that sort of mindset and mission, you can actually make a lot of money. If you are only in it for the money, you won't make any, or you make it, you, you might make it for a few months or a year, and then you'll be out of the business. The only people who actually stay in long it term. for the long term, I think they are the ones who have a bigger mission and a bigger vision in their mind. So yeah, I Which love all, that. I think it all comes down to setting the right expectations, to be honest with you. Like again, one of the things that makes you very successful copywriter, makes my agency very uh, standing, is setting the right expectations. We all do the same thing. Okay, but what we don't all do is setting the right expectation. Our customers in the digital industry, particularly when they approach us, they expect us we will be able to do everything. And if we don't have money, if we're struggling financially, we may start accepting everyone. And this is exactly where every freelancer, copywriter, marketing agency start to collapse by not setting mm. the right expectations. Mm. That's a very good point. So you need to have some sort of criteria some sort of qualification yeah, of what sort true. of clients you're going to work with if you start working with everyone you're going to have a downfall Absolutely. now before we move forward with with a very important question where i asked you about one of the clients that you loved helping what were the problems they were facing so we're actually getting into the nitty gritties i want to ask my audience if you guys are enjoying it so far i want some fire in the comments because we are here just for you mo have taken out time out of his busy schedule for you guys so please tell me in the comments and tell Mo in the comments how excited you are and how welcoming you are as Pakistan is to someone who is coming here online with us from abroad. <laughs> I love Pakistani people, but don't get me wrong, 50% of my teammates are from Pakistan. I love Pakistan. I've never been there. I wish I would. And I will eventually. I have everything basically. I'm expecting to visit Pakistan in the next, I would say, 12 months. But mm -hmm. I love Pakistan to death and I love Pakistani people, love the foods. So I'm a big fan. You're most welcome. I would love Thank to show you. you around, you know. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, I, I guess people are actually listening and, and they're enjoying the podcast so far. So let's move on to the next question. And that is, you know, I want to talk about one particular client that you loved helping, you know, what problems were they facing and how you got them out of this complicated issue with your marketing skills and campaigns, you know. So let's talk about... We had a client that was like a couple of, couple of maybe two years ago. Okay, uh, we're selling basically t-shirts and leggings. Um, the design was really nice, okay? Um, she was struggling to understand basically what it takes to scale her business. She spent a lot of money. She was spending ten to $15,000 a month on marketing with less than 0 0.8, 0 0.9x return investments. And it was really a massive, 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 massive change when we said, okay, listen, first month, this is, the, this, this is the KPI basically that you're going to achieve in the first month, second month, third month. Okay, fine. And then afterwards, this is when you're going to scale. So we started embedding UGCs, uh, content marketing, SEO, social media, 
uh, media buying, email marketing, SMS marketing, building funnels using click funnel, one page click funnel. Okay. Each and everything, which is what we call omni channel marketing. Because when it comes to marketing, you can, you know what? It's similar to being a chef. Okay. And you decided that you're going to be responsible only for one element of the cuisine. And it doesn't work that way. If you decided to be a chef, you have to know how to do the whole cuisine, how to cook the whole cuisine. Okay. And that's what you should do as marketer. So you should be able to handle everything, not yourself. You can have somebody you can rely on to help you with the circle. But it's very important that you have all of the ingredients, all of the elements to have the cuisine to the customer. And then this is when exactly here, return ad spend jumped, I think from 0.9, roughly speaking, to 3x, 4x and scaling. So it was big jump from nothing. Now she has paid off all of her debt, mortgage, zero Everything is changing. Now he's expanding to the UK. She's a US customer. She's expanding to the UK, Canada, Australia. And next year, she should be in New Zealand. Wow. That's one hell of a journey for with a client and one yeah. hell of results. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much for sharing. And I hope this was valuable for all the people who are listening to us as well and the people who will be listening to us in the recording as well. Now, I you know want to go into a question where people who are listening to us, you know, how would someone go about because I, I as as we have been discussing and as we can see that you are a successful marketer and you have been able to grow your agency and you know mm -hmm. make a lot of impact how would someone who is completely brand new would actually go about learning marketing and what is the best way to get to where you are today you know in a very short time uh frankly speaking as i mentioned earlier uh number one number one number two number three number four number five is setting the right expectations, always set the right expectations. Number six and seven and eight and nine and 10, understand how to talk to your team, okay? So many people maybe who are watching this right now will be watching later, they're great when it comes to writing copies. They're fantastic when it comes to designing logos, websites. They're superiors when it comes to media buying, okay? But again, one hand can't clap alone, okay? You need to have a team with you. And if you're not going to appreciate your team, you're not, you're not going to respect your team. You're not going to have the idea of scaling. You're not going to believe in that I need to have people to help me. You're not going to put faith into your team. That's when you will collapse. If I tell you go take courses, so many people take courses, okay? Courses will never make you successful. Courses will help you understand what it takes to do whatever you need to do. If you need to do how to do basmati rice, okay, I can take courses and they can watch some YouTube videos to show me how to do basmati rice. That's not an issue. If I want to do chicken curry, I can do the same. But leveraging it and being one and only one in Manchester in the UK who can do the curry or the rice, whatever that, whatever that is, it requires mindset, not technical skills. This is such an important point. I mean... And you know, it's so hard because when, when you have a skill, so me being a copywriter, you being a marketer, it's so hard to let go, you know, because yeah. you believe that, okay, I need to do everything myself. I need to handle everything for the client myself because I'm the guy, I'm a copywriter. It, it's in your ego. And it took me a while to actually go into that mindset as well. Okay, now I need to outsource. I need to hire people. I need to hire other copywriters and give them work. True, I true, can't handle true. everything on my own. If I keep yeah, on doing it, everything on, on my own, I won't be able to grow brands. I won't be able to get to where I am today. And I won't be able to help more people, which is so Very important. True. So yeah. So what do you think is the most important thing when it comes to starting an agency, when you're just starting out? Uh, never, never, never try to do it all at the beginning. So for example, if you're good at copywriting, don't try to learn another skill. Don't do that. You're good at copywriting? Fine master one thing at a time so you're good at copywriting what exactly are copywriting email marketing leverage that leverage it to the roots and then sms and then sales copies and then funnels it doesn't have to be like you know it doesn't have to be one each month or one every two months but if we're going to make it like percentage wise then 90% or 80% should be on one thing. And the other 20% should be on developing the other two things within the copywriting. Once you feel like you have mastered what your audience needs, which in these days, to be honest with you, I would always encourage everybody to know how to do email marketing. That's very important. And when I say email marketing, you have to consider all the flows. Because if I come to you as an e-commerce brand, which as you know, we have also our own e-commerce business. I would come to you. I would not expect you just to have a copy because ChatGPT can do that. 
I would expect mm. you to tell me, Mo, you need email marketing, you also need flows. Okay, so mm. you need this and that. So the strategy part, that's what mm. will make you. Chat GPT never provides strategy, never. Mm. Okay, you will provide me with strategy. So that's with email marketing. For example, sales copy. Okay, Mo, you need sales copy for your business. You need one landing page, one opt-in page, and one thank you page. Mm. That's why you need. Okay, you didn't talk. You didn't talk price. You are talking value here. Okay, yeah. at least if I would go with one of them based on my budget. I would know the second I'm happy to upgrade, it would be you. Mm. So I would say focus on one thing, focus on one thing at a time. I mean, this is such an important point. And I actually talk about it with my students in my programs as well, that look, you guys need to learn how to give strategy to the client. When client is on a call, you need to tell him, okay, I'm going to design your funnel. I'm going to tell you what are the steps you need, what, what, what should be your lead magnet, what are the bonuses you need to add to your front end offer, you need to have upsells. By the time they're convinced that you're giving them a strategy and you know what you're doing, they don't care if you use GPT or PPT or PPC yeah. <laughs> to create yeah. the copy, they're going to go yeah. with you. Yeah. Because true. in the back of their mind, they're thinking, oh, if this guy knows the strategy, if this guy knows how the how my you know, funnel should go, he should be the one writing as, as Very well, true. naturally. Very right? true. So I, I, I want to know, you know, if, if you're trying to learn strategy, if you're trying to learn the flows in email marketing or or you know the the, the the in-depth tactical stuff. As a beginner, I think it's very difficult because in the courses, very few of them, they actually give you these sort of strategical and tactical steps. They just give you the theory, maybe some practical steps. And unless you get to work with different clients, you it's, a very, it's very hard to learn all these things. True. So what is one of the best resources or what is one of the practices that someone should do so they will be able to get better at strategy stuff so that Fail. GPT cannot replace them? Uh, fail. So number one, you need to fail. Okay, you need to understand that you need. it's okay to fail. I understand that when you start your journey at the beginning, the first three, four, five customers will hate you, would wish that they never knew you, which is fine. So you have to be very forgiving with that, okay? Because um, you don't know. Like, you know what it takes. You understand it. You have the skill. Fine. Now you're in the driver's seat. Drive. You will have some accidents at the beginning. So be mm. very all right with that. But learn. Okay, so mm. why did that customer get annoyed? Sometimes it's the customer issue, by the way. Like sometimes we will all see those clients where they are very, very, very painful. They don't know what they need. They don't know what they anything. Okay, and that's what that's those are the people basically who will be happy to have business with you at the beginning. Why? Because they want to pay less. And when you don't have reputation at the beginning, you will need to charge less. Okay, for mm. your value, just to get reviews, just to get testimonials, just to get all of that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Once you start acquiring all of those testimonials, all of those verifications, new customers will not worry if you use ChatGPT or otherwise, because they will say even if he does use ChatGPT, it's mm -hmm. impossible for all of those people to um, to to like his work. Okay. Mm -hmm. So don't worry too much about that. As you mentioned earlier, I'm out trying to make sure that you provide strategy, because that's something ChatGPT will never do, and you will never be replaced by AI if that's where we're going to. Yeah, so someone is asking, it's Uzma. She says, but sir, our failure will hurt our clients' businesses too, won't it? It so will. worry about the clients. The, no, that's what I'm saying. This, it, it will happen. It will hurt. It will, but let me tell you something, Uzma. Um, when you start a business, you need to put your emotions aside. Okay? Because you're not doing this intentionally. Okay, you're not you're you're not happy with that. You're not enjoying your your bath. You're not enjoying your bath. You're not enjoying your summer holiday. And you're not worried about your customer's results, okay? It's mm. just that you don't know, okay? Um, sometimes, when I say sometimes, actually, I mean a lot of the times. Customers are not very detailed about their brief. So they tell mm. you, I need to have somebody who can do for me a sales copy. And as somebody like you who don't know what to do, you will say, yes, I know how to do sales copy. And then later on, you start realizing that this customer has so many things beyond sales copy. So when I say experience, I did not really mean I did not really mean experience that you would know how to do it better. No. I also meant that you would know what to ask with every new customer before they join you. So you mm. will be able to ask a couple of questions. So for example, that's a trick that I use that you guys can feel free to steal. Okay. Very, very, very lovely, lovely tip. Okay. When we have new customers, the first question I ask, uh, have you worked with any web developer before or designer before? That's the first question. Okay. Why do I do that? This, those two, 
are the utmost two difficult things when it comes to freelancing. Why? Because if I want to build a website, I will tell you need to build a website. And then as we build the website, oh, can we change this from here to there, from there to here? You know what? Bring it down. Bring it up. Crazy. Okay. So if they said, yes, I have done that, I do, 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 all of that kind of stuff, then we go to the second question, okay, which is tell me exactly what you need and please list all of the references. There's a second point. And the third point, please understand that base, uh, it's very important to recap. I beg each and every one, please, 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 please make sure that when you have any new customer, try to recap, even if the customer didn't ask for it. So, sir or madam, you're asking me to do one, two, three, four, five within mm. that time frame, attaching all the videos and all the references that they mentioned. Yes mm. or no? Yes. Okay, good. Then this is what I'm going to do. And this is what I'm charging you accordingly. But please bear in mind for anything outside that additional charge will occur and be transparent on your additional charge. Mm. That will massively minimize the risk. I mean, these are such great points and I was taking notes myself. You know, rephrasing is something that one of the big brands, one of the biggest brands in the world do as well. Their, their customer support is trained to do that. They, by the end of it, it sometimes it's annoying when Meta calls yeah. and they're like, okay, I'm going to tell you what we have helped you with today. Number one, yeah. number two, number N. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes they're, you know, but it's so important. And I, and I tend to do that myself with uh, many of my clients uh, that I actually rephrase whatever they are looking for. And then I tell them, look, this, 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 is that true? Okay, now I'm going to charge you XYZ. So definitely a very good point. And as Asma said that, you know, our failure will hurt our clients. I want to talk a little bit here that number one, clients are businesses are also aware of the risk when they are hiring a marketer or a copywriter. They're not looking for magic, especially if they're hiring someone who is new, who is not charging as much. They know the risk. Yeah, Absolutely. if they're going, if they're going for someone world class and they're paying world class money, yeah. okay, then they are not in the in the mindset to take a risk because they're willing to invest a lot of money and they want they want results. But when they're going for a new person, they are aware of the risk. They know it can go south Absolutely. and we might not get as many results. And as Troy Erickson says, he's one of the most popular email marketers. He says that the best thing that you can do is learn from clients money. Yeah. So start working with clients, work on their campaigns, work, yeah. run ads from their money, learn yeah. from them. Right? Absolutely. So, Absolutely. So it's, there's nothing unethical about that. I think that is the way to go. So yeah, now that we have talked a lot about marketing and, and as a marketer, you obviously come across a lot of copy as well. And, you know, I, I have been working with you for a long time as a copywriter as well. So you have, yeah. worked, and I know you have absolutely great understanding of copywriting as well. So as a marketer, can you shed light on the aspect that what is the role or how much role does copywriting actually play in marketing? And does it really move the needle? Is copy really important to get sales and get revenues? I would say copywriting represents, it depends on what we say marketing. It depends on what exactly we're talking about. So if we're talking media buying at 70%, minimum mm. speaking. Okay. If you're talking e-commerce, like email marketing, that's hundred percent or maybe 90%. 90%. Okay. So 90% so role is played by copy. That's what you're saying. Ab ab absolutely. I would say 90%, let's say for email marketing, 70% minimum speaking with media buying, um, SEO, 90% again. So it is very important. It's word copywriting, because back in the days, copywriting used to be just copywriting, which is throwing some words. Nowadays, it's more of emotional forward slash human copywriting or writing, I would say. So it doesn't just move the needles, it moves everything. Because usually mm. people get attention, gets drawn to your ads, not mm. just by the image, but by the copy. But what you say, so what you say on the mm. video is copywriting, okay? What yeah. you have on the image is copywriting. The first two mm. lines you have as captions, copywriting. Your LinkedIn post, copywriting. Your email marketing, copywriting. Everything's copywriting. So, and that's mm. one of the things that I always encourage our students or people that are watching this, try to diversify, considering the one at a time thing, eh, rule, Try to diversify your skills with copywriting. Don't mm. dig your head just into mm. one thing, which is email marketing, because this is when you would be easily replaced like that. If not by ChatGPT, mm. it would be by another colleague. Mm. So Such it's an important, important point, I think. Point. 
Mm-hmm. You know, p- people are so afraid of GPT, they forget about humans. Humans are one of the most ferocious thing on planet. It's not GPT or anything else. If you don't upscale, some other human is actually going to replace you. He is Absolutely. going to get ahead of you. He is going to learn another skill and he'll be more valuable than you in the company. So, so important. And, and as you said, you know, it's, it's so authentic uh, coming from and credible coming from a seasoned marketer that copy has a huge role in marketing. So anyone who is actually learning copywriting, it is a good news for you guys. Copy mm-hmm. has a lot of role to play when it comes to sales. And again, Mo, let's also talk about two things here. As a copywriter, how can you so I think we have probably already talked about it, that it's the strategy. So you have to give strategy so GPT won't replace you. So you have to learn strategy as well, tactical stuff, stuff. How, how should the funnel be designed? What, what should be the flows in a marketing campaign? Let's talk about media buyers as well, marketers. How can they make themselves GPT proof? Because I think in the near future, Facebook, YouTube, all their algorithms are going to be very strong that people may not need marketers to run their ads. Is that true? Or you think... It's already it's happening not. anyway. It's not in the future. You have so many software tools. Uh, let's say with one thing, Kamal. AI has been there forever. It just got popular after ChatGPT, but mm. it was there since forever. Okay. Google now has launched what they call Shopping Plus campaign, Advanced Plus Shopping Plus campaign, which is a thing that allows you, if you don't know how to target your audience, if you don't know anything, they can do that for you. They can help you with the targeting. They can do each and everything for you. Okay. But if you look at it, I always love to use uh, kitchen equipment appliances, okay? Do you think appliances and chefs and and restaurants basically are going to replace what we do at home? No. Okay, those tools are there to help us. If you're not going Mm -hmm. to use them, the tool will never replace you. It's the person who's using the tool will be replacing you. So as media buyer, I would always encourage try to set the right expectations. It's a soft skill game rather than hard skill. Because if I want to run campaign, I don't know how to do it. I will try to use whatever software on the market to play around Mm. it and to see Mm. how I can do it myself. 99% I will fail. Why? Because I don't have the experience on when to pause, when to continue, when to do this, when to do that. Okay. I need to speak to human being. So if I hire you as a media buyer and you're not responsive, you're trying to give me cold responses. You don't know what you're doing. You're doing very basic work. You're not taking the extra mile. You're just doing exactly based on what you're being charged or based on what you're charging me and not based on what needs to be done. You're not being emotional to me. You will look to me no different to ChatGPT. As a matter of fact, ChatGPT mm. will, be diff- will be cheaper. Mm. So you'll be the one who decided whether I should go with you as a human being or I should go with Web AI tool in the market. Well, yeah, that, and that's that's a very good point as well. And, you know, before I go and move on to my last question, I also want to say that I think your internet might be breaking, so your video is a bit blurry, but we can at least hear you clearly. Um, my, my yeah, video. so as you said, you know, it's, it's important that you, that you bring strategy into it and you don't worry about G- GPT as much as you are. GPT is just a tool and and you need to learn how to use that tool and it's only going to help you because... It's so true that tools are just there to assist you and somebody needs to know the fundamentals before they can even use a tool. So when it comes to copywriting, you need to know the fundamentals before you use GPT and even judge if the copy is good enough. And if you're using it for marketing knowledge or anything else, you need to know the fundamentals of marketing yourself to even judge if the advice given by GPT is even applicable or good enough. So yeah, let's talk about the last question. And and after that, if we have some time, we can take some questions from the audience. So what is the single most important advice that you would give to people looking to get into marketing or copywriting in 2023? Uh, 100% you need to start. 100% don't delay. Don't wait for the perfect time. Don't wait for the ideal time because they never come. Ideal time never come. Perfect time never come. If you have enough skill, just one skill, just one skill, go for it okay go talk to your family members go talk to your friends tell them i do this i do that try to let them have a business with you on platforms like upwork or fiverr or whatever so you can have some verifications some validations because that's Mm -hmm. that's that's going to be the bottleneck for you for any startup anyway okay so start master ai as much as you can okay try to rely on that because that will save you time 
as mm. a naive as a non as a as a naive person as a non educated person i know there's a platform called chatgpt and i may use it just to answer basic questions for me but for you as an expert as a freelancer you need to know how to how to use it basically to the roots like i have seen on the market before on facebook uh, there are so many software companies now that they have their own plugins that work with chatgpt so for example mm. chatgpt doesn't allow you doesn't allow or doesn't have the access to check any links if you know that so if, mm. if you give any link to chatgpt and say summarize that link chatgpt will say sorry i can't do that okay mm -hmm. there's so many software programs now allow you to do that so they tell you use this plugin with chat gbt and it will do that for you yeah okay try to click on anything that is relevant to what you do click 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 even if you're not going to buy because when you do that mm -hmm. you tell facebook i'm interested in those things and facebook mm -hmm. will keep providing you with the latest information in the market and then one such day an incredible tip yeah such an incredible tip I hope you guys are taking notes because you know, as I as I expected, you know, Mo is actually spilling nuggets of gold here live with us, and uh, you know, again, as he said, and I hundred percent back it. Just start. That's the thing. Just start. You you can't keep on waiting before you get good enough or perfect or whatever. Whatever you know, just get started. If you start today, perhaps two years from now, you will be in a completely different place. If you keep on waiting for two years, you will be where you are right now, even after two years. So let's take a question from Irfan. And if you guys want to ask some questions, I think we have three, four, five minutes of, yeah. of questions right now. So let's take the question of Irfan here. He says, how to become good at copywriting fast? Is there any shortcuts to writing compelling copy? Uh, how to become good copywriter fast? No, I would slash word fast. Don't rush it. Because if you try to rush it, you would sink eventually. And you will not give yourself the time to learn. Okay, mm -hmm. so how to become good copywriter? And if I will end the question here, I'll say start today. Start today. Practice mm -hmm. all the information that you have. Practice with the clients. Okay. Mm -hmm. And never, never, never price yourself cheap. Don't do that. Because mm -hmm. if you do that, that will make the customer skeptical to use your service. Mm -hmm. Don't be expensive as well. Try to be in the middle. Okay. If people charge, let's say, per word $0.05 or 0 0.06 or one, even 0 0.10 cents. Okay. Try to use something in between. Okay, mm -hmm. try to write some copies so you can display or demonstrate as case studies. Okay, and that's it. That's regarding how to become a good copywriter. Is there any shortcuts to writing compelling copy? The thing is, this is a very subjective question because what might be compelling to me might not be compelling to Kamal. Okay, might not be compelling to you. So the only person who decides what's compelling and what's not is the customer. And if you would ask me what is the best way to decide what is compelling copy and what's not, is sales. If the customer's making sales, then it's working. So, many, so, so a lot of times we have very bad copies and they work. They make sales. Mm -hmm. So if they make sales, that's good. And if the customer is happy, that's even more mm -hmm. important. So the customer should be the benchmark. Yeah, I think that's a very good answer. And and I think the market should be the benchmark as well. well how yeah. market responds to what you're writing. Exactly. Sure. So here is another question. Uh, we can't see the name of this person. What is the role of formal education in service-based startups such as copywriting or digital marketing agencies? Does it really make us stand out at the beginning at least? So formal education, degrees. Uh, degrees. Uh, degrees in service-based startup is nothing. Okay, nothing. It will never help you. I have two master degrees, one in business, one in marketing. I went to Harvard, as I mentioned earlier. I went to UCLA. That's apart from the stand, that, the self-learning ones like LinkedIn, Google, all of that kind of stuff. Mm. Nothing is better than having, I would say, a course, for example, like Kamal, with Kamal, and I'm not promoting his service, but I know him in person, okay, and I know how good he is. So if I would pay that guy money, I would expect that you tell me best practice tips. The tips that you would get from his mouth will help you in your business. The issue with my degrees, and that's the only issue that I have, mainly with basic degrees, that they have one size fits all approach, irrespective to what you want to become, irrespective to who you are, irrespective to anything. That's the curriculum. That's the exam. That's how we do things. That's not tailored mm. to you. 
Whereas people like Kamal or, or any educated educational platform, basically, okay, that provides you with best practice tips, they are designing things based on what will warm your pocket with money. Mm. And that's why you care about. Uh, and no, clients will never hire you based on, that's for the second part of the question, clients will never hire you based on your certificates. Yeah, and, 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 and so true. Being myself in the industry for five years as a copywriter and even marketing services are sometimes provided to clients as well. They never ask you for a degree and it doesn't really matter. I have a mechanical engineering degree from one of the prestigious universities in my country and it doesn't even matter because you just need yeah. to be good at what you are actually offering to them. True. Um, my question, what would you recommend for us to get client? How do you get clients? Um, I can't see that way. question. Uh, what would you, okay, yeah, my question, yeah. Uh, what would you recommend for us to get clients? How do you get clients? Paid and owned media. Write it down, please. Paid and owned media. Those are the only three approaches, basically, three ways that you can get money. So paid media, if you have money, don't waste it. Go run some ads. But obviously, if somebody can help you, that would be even better. Okay, that will help you get customers faster. Uh, own media is leveraging what you have, like what we're doing right now. Kamal didn't pay me. I didn't pay him. Okay, we know each other. He owns the platform and he invited me. He said, Mo, can we do this? Can we do that? And we have been chatting about that for so long, but we didn't have mm. time. So, and we made it. Okay, so that's a good mm. way of promoting a business in general, okay, by providing, providing a value to you. And that's what you need to do as well. You need to have what you know by providing service, I'm sorry, by providing value to your potential customers. Are they going to become customers innocently? No, but that will show you as an industry leader in what you do. So that's what the mm. And that's the last thing, that's the last thing, which is reviews, testimonials, all of that kind of stuff. Mm. There is nothing, every, everything you have in marketing on earth will fall under one of those categories. <laughs> Absolutely. I think that's one of the best ways you could have put it. Um, I think we should just take one last question. And this is Noor. She asks, how much time is required for a person to learn digital marketing? Let's just give her a, give us, give her a ballpark number to get good at marketing. For a person to learn digital marketing. Well, again, you will never be able to, it depends on what you want to do, Noor. Like if you want to become a freelancer, then it, you have to specialize what exactly you want to do because you can't make it old. Okay. You can't be mm. the media buyer, the email marketer, the copywriter, the SMS marketing, the funnel builder, the logo designer. You can't be that. Okay. You have to decide exactly what you want to do. Um, I would say first 12 months are the best 12 months. Okay. Um, 12 months are more than enough from my perspective to be on a good road. Okay. Depends also on how many clients you're getting, how you're treating them. Second month, usually these things when decline, I don't know how, but this is what usually happens. So first month, first year, okay. Second year, mm, slightly. Third year goes up again. And then fourth mm. year, you got it's sort of up and down, up and down, up and down. So it's a learning curve. But I would say usually 12 months um, are sufficient. Yeah. Well, I guess uh, that's about it. I, I'm going to see if we have any good questions. Yeah, I'm somebody to wants to know. Happy to stay for another three, four minutes. Okay, then we can yeah, take yeah. this question, I guess. From yeah, Brazil. he has been asking yeah. it consistently again and again. Um, why would client or business choose us as a beginner? What's the single most advice for people who are new to copywriting or marketing? You know. Okay, why would people choose you as a beginner? Who would tell them you're a beginner? Okay, that's the first thing. You're not going to go to the client and say, "Listen, this is my first day, and you are my lab. You are my lab rat." Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to do that so people don't know okay so um it, there's no way for the client would know that you're a beginner that's why i said don't try what beginners do and this is how they would know you're a beginner okay if you try to price yourself very cheap if you mm -hmm. try to um yeah, yeah yes 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 yeah listen yeah. should, should i send you an offer should i send you an offer they will know mm -hmm. you're a beginner okay if you do not summarize they will know you're 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 a beginner Okay. Mm. If you care about nothing but closing, if you keep pushing it every day, so I mm. message you, I said, can you do this? Yes. And then every day you keep messaging me, they will know you're a beginner. So that's mm. how they will know you're a beginner. Think of yourself as somebody. 
people would love to have a business with. But since you're actually a beginner, as I mentioned earlier, try to do three, two things. Number one, try to price yourself in the middle. Number two, try to talk value and strategy with the customer as much as you can. Number three, try to throw through as many samples as you can, even of those samples, mm. because nobody knows who's for this and who's for that. Just have mm. like some samples, basically, in case the customer asked you for some. And mm. that's what I would say. Yeah. I think again, incredible advice and, and, and the points are so actionable and you guys can see, and I think it's about the perceived value and, and the perception that you build in the market. It's not about who you are, but it's about what they think you are. And I think that's, that's why I talk about in the, in the, in the client hunting classes and I teach these guys how to respond to clients and how to shut up after you have given them the price. <laughs> You yeah. don't message them every two hours. Uh, yeah. Oh, I will charge you 200. And after two hours, if, if they don't respond, you're like, okay, maybe we can do 150. And then yeah. they don't respond for two. You're like, okay, let's do 100. <laughs> and then by the time they're back, you are down to 20 from 200. And they're like, <laughs> I was out with my wife having dinner. What's what's happening? Oh, you started yeah. with 200 and you want to charge me 20? Sure, we can do 20. I was fine with 200 as well. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. <laughs> you need to, as a beginner, you need to go into the mindset of a pro and, and listen to that advice and actually implement it. As Mo said, being, uh, being an entrepreneur for so long and after working with so many clients himself, he knows how to get people to consider you as an authority and, 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 and a pro. So when he's giving you the advice, you should definitely take it and note it down. So yeah, Mo, uh, any last words you want to say to my audience, people who are live with us and people who will be watching it in the recording? It's been an incredible session. Anything Thank you, you. want to add to it? Uh, I just wish they enjoyed it. Um, um, just looking forward to have another, have it like part two together, maybe, uh, yeah. in the near future. And it was a lovely time. That's it. Yeah, I, I would love to have a part two with you and, and and I'll see what kind of response I get from these people on Absolutely. a part two. If you guys are excited, you should tell us tell us in the chat. Thank you so much, Mo, once again for taking out time out of your busy schedule and actually extending Thank it you. for over five, 10 minutes for us. Um, so grateful. It was amazing. Thank Thanks a Likewise. lot. Cheers, mate. Thank you, guys. I love you all. So thank you so much. Take it easy. Bye. Love you too, Mo. Take care. Bye. So guys, I hope this was enjoyable, this was valuable, and this was incredibly fun. And I thoroughly enjoyed it myself, as you guys can see. If you guys want to in the future, we will take this podcast and do it. And I will do part 2 with Mo, which will probably light my journey a little bit and we will take a detailed uh, discussion and take this discussion forward. Please tell me in the comments. Uh, log baad mein recording mein bhi dekhenge, do tell it in the comments, show some fire so we can do a part two. And so that Mo can also see how much love he's getting from Pakistan when he's doing a podcast with us. So yeah, I hope this was valuable. It's very difficult to get out of the experts ko, uh, unka time to take the podcast. Pe. But I think for my community and for, for my AKC fam, I think it's very valuable. So Mo was kind enough to do that and he was kind enough to give us uh, time out of his schedule. So thank you so much for everyone, to everyone who were live with us and stay till the very end. Inshallah, recording is available on YouTube, Facebook, every place. You can also see it in that place. Keep your thoughts and thoughts. Inshallah, you will be very soon with you again. This is a very valuable podcast, hopefully. Give me a chance. Take care. Hafiz.